Oh yes, update 2.3 experimental is here with a lot of the things that came up during the town hall session. And it's actually pretty good. It doesn't go all the way, but at least it's starting to give us some of those things that were mentioned during the town hall. So let's go through the patch notes for 2.3 experimental. They talk about that's coming out, a lot of changes that they talked about during the town hall stream. And they do mention make a backup save before you update to 2.3. Now, I always do that normally anyway, but it is really good practice. Take a copy of your save so you don't have issues because you can always roll back. They do mention that they've added a runtime function that would automatically convert the old badges to the new survival gun. I will show the survival gear in just a moment. What it basically means is that if you had unlocked the badges before, it'll give you the equivalent survival gear. So that's really cool. Some challenges will may remain completed. Others will be optional for those that choose to complete them. One of the good things is that you will be able to do the biomes in any order. If the badges were previously unlocked, the recipe will be also unlocked. And now what happens is that you create you do your badge, or rather you your complete your challenge, and you can craft the gear. And once you've crafted the gear, you can keep a few spare because you lose it if you drop it uh, along with your backpack, for instance, you die, and you can give it to your friends. So it's really nice. So some of the highlights here is that the biomes and the challenges can be explored and completed in any order. This was good. It was too linear before. Recover from biome hazard effects while sheltered, allowing players to explore deeper into each biome. It was a bit of an issue before that you go in, a few minutes later, you have to go out because, well, you're basically starting to take damage. Now you can get sheltered. So you can get into a house or something, breathe out, do whatever, and the timer will start resetting. You don't have to leave the biome. That's really good. Recover from biome hazard effect in any other biome, which means that if you're nearby uh, snow, you go into radiation, and vice versa, it will still reduce the other ones. Smoothies now have, well, they're no longer smoothies. They're actually something else. They're like drinks. There is some some rules, something to eat, so that's nice. Biome Bandage have been changed to survival gear. I will show that. The drop on death, just like an item. It's basically a special item that is on your character. You can craft additional gear items if you're death or to other players. And so they do mention, even without survival gear, storms no longer require players to escape the biome they're in while taking shelter. I believe it basically means that because if you're sheltered, you don't suffer the effect. So that's nice. Flex victors no longer close. Good. I mean, they're, they're not rumblings, right? Lower chance of infection, good. I mean, this plague, sp plague spitter insect swarm or the bees or whatever it was, it was terrible. You, you basically have this really high infection really quickly. Now, tree stump bees don't give infection, finally. Now, if you get honey, or rather, if you are encountering bees in a tree stump, there will be honey. Good. So you don't get bees, but no honey, which was really weird. Several tweaks to the zombie AI, not specified. The dew collectors have a lower activity heat value. It's really weird that they, they generate heat, but you know, that's what it is. So let's have a look here. You have smoke gear. Cool. This is against the burnt forest. You have the desert, which is a uh, desert gear, heads, uh, whatever. Snow gear. And you have the radiation gear. Now you have the equivalent. It's no longer smoothie. There's something else. You have the black lung serum. For when the world turns gray and your lungs start rattling, it'll give you some benefits. Health, run speed. Actually, all of them give run speed. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the sunshine tonic actually gives you food and water, which actually is quite nice. I like that. You have the scorcher stew, also food and water. And you have fallout flush, which gives you health. Again, run speed, but it doesn't give you the food and everything. So that's pretty nice. I, I like that they've changed these ones. So what we're going to go into here... They're going to end up here. This is where you saw the badges before. So now they're effectively items that are stored in a special slot. Good. So they don't take extra space in your inventory or anything. There are special slots that will drop if you die. So make sure you have extras in, uh, in case you need to go and recover your loot or your backpack. So for instance, I'm here in the snow biome. And I'm shivering. You see, I'm getting this uh, debuff here. It's shivering. So I can take the scorcher stew or I can wear the snow gear. I put on the snow gear. There we go. It goes away. Very nice. It also means I'm out here shivering and then I go inside and that should be clearing. You'll see it's actually uh, clearing down here and I'm waking things up. Sorry, sorry, I paused you, no AI. So which means that when you're out and about, I wish that it would be more than three minutes. I think that you should put something like five minutes. That'll give you a little bit more time to, to move around. 
three minutes is not a long time to make it here from another biome and really go around. So I, I think five would be better. Yes, you can eat or drink whatever it is, but again, that only gives you a, a double amount, which is, you know, nice, but again, it's not, not super, super, super. Seven, I mean, yes, yeah, sure, it's good, but I think five default and double to ten would, I think, would fit better. That would mean you can go around, do some looting and do whatever fighting, and then once it's going down, you go in and hide and uh, let it reset a little bit. So uh, do a quest, for instance. So let's look at some of the other things that they have put in there. Honk event for vehicles to allow game events to fire based on honking the horn. This has been long in the coming. I think, for instance, when you honk your vehicle horn, zombies should be alerted if they're close by, right? Maybe the heat map should be updated as well. Because right now, you can drive by and, you know, yes, they will be alerted because they hear or see you, but not because of the actual honking itself. And it doesn't generate any heat. Some changes on the AI, the wander and look are more active. So if they're alerted, they're going to wander and look around more. And I mentioned they randomly turn around while alert. Previously, you might have seen that where you are having a zombie. Uh, the Yeti is, uh, yeah, they have to change that one. But let's say he's alert because he knows something is around. He won't be looking around. Now with the changes, they will actually start to look around more like they're searching for something. And I think that'll make it a little bit more dynamic feel. The mention about the biome hassle is now three minutes. Again, I wish it was five. Survival gears now drop on death because they are specific items and not just a bash that is attached to your character. They mentioned that thing about tree stumps now roll once for honey, then again for bees. And bees always come with honey. Less infection from the plague spitter, spitter insect swarm. And one thing that they fixed, and they actually mentioned that they had added, but it wasn't fully added, I guess, was that biome spawn AI move speed increase from storms that did not happen at night. So what they added was that if there is a storm right now, zombies are supposed to be moving faster. Now, they did during the daytime, but not during the nighttime, which was really weird. So they have fixed that down. So how do you participate? Well, right click on the game in Steam, click on properties, betas, and latest experimental. Let it download and then run it. If you then want to revert back to the stable version, just go to betas and select none. Some people have asked me about this in the past, but they're like, I can't find the 2.2 version. That's because you have to go to betas and don't have a version selected, just select none. Personally, I like the changes. I'm glad that they're moving forward with some of these, uh, I would call it low hanging fruit, things that they could put in without uh, waiting months and months and months because it has sort of uh, deep changes underneath the hood. So I'm glad they're doing this. I still need, think that they need a bunch of other things to really make the game nice and fresh. I would like to have more zombie types in all the biomes. We got the frost claw, which they're changing the look at least in the snow, and you have the plague spitter in the desert. I would like to have a new one in the forest. I would like to have new one in the burnt forest, new one in the wasteland as well. Give us more with special abilities sometimes, but they don't necessarily have the special abilities. Just give us new that act a little bit differently. But of course, having some special abilities would be nice as well. And for the love of God, Give us more electricity items. Give us, actually, there is a flamethrower trap still in XML. Unfortunately, it's not been implemented. You can't use it. Implement it. Give us more traps. Give us a piston. Give us special things that you can do with electricity. I'm sure if you look at a lot of other games, there's a bunch out there. There's some NPCs that can help you around your base, chopping down things, maybe uh, go mining, whatever, something to make your base feel more, more dynamic, more livable, more, more and less alone. Catch you next time, Survivor.